Today in the 9th edition previews we get to see the new patrol detachment, more details about playing 40k at a smaller level with combat patrol, and a few example combat patrols with some weird things going on with the power level with them. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we've been going through the Games Workshop news and previews as they've been coming out. Today's video is based off the Warhammer livestream, with some additional details on the actual article that they posted. And we'll go over the new patrol detachment, the additional details we've got with playing the combat patrol version of the game, and these slightly strange power level discrepancies in that order. Let's jump right into it. So we've seen the new battalion detachment, and now we've got a look at the patrol. Compared with a battalion, this one will only cost 2 command points to add into your army as an additional, although of course if your warlord is part of one of these core detachments, then you're going to get the command points refunded. You can see that in the command benefits section, where it says plus 2 CP if your warlord is part of this detachment. Judging by this, it looks like they're going to be charging more command points for the bigger detachments, and perhaps less for the smaller ones, so just based off this, I would expect the brigade detachment to cost either 3 or 4 command points, or potentially even more. I suppose brigades do open up quite a lot of force organisation slots, although at the opportunity cost of having to take certain units. I suspect if that is the case, then it's quite likely you'd be wanting to take brigades as your core detachment, the one that has your warlord in. In any case, this looks like quite an easy way of including a few more units of basically any type in your battle forged army, just if you wanted a few more option slots of elites, fast attack, heavy support or flyers, and you'd already filled up them in your core detachment. 2 CP isn't as bad as 3 command points in tax, so I think we might actually see a few more patrols used in more competitive games. Otherwise, in terms of units that you can take, it looks pretty much unchanged, aside from the dedicated transport change, which means that you can only have one of them for each infantry unit in the detachment, even if those infantry units happen to be characters or something. And I believe that the wording on the restrictions has slightly changed, although please correct me if I'm wrong. It says that all units must be from the same faction, as opposed to just share one faction keyword, so I think that that probably means that you wouldn't be able to take Adeptus Astartes detachments with weird mixes of Space Marine chapters as you were able to before. I suspect they would be defining what a faction is as part of the core rulebook if they're referencing it here. If we move on to the actual combat patrol game mode now, this is essentially their way of playing the smallest possible game of Warhammer 40k. It seems like in this edition they really want to make a big effort to support this sort of game, to hopefully allow people to play short, one hour long games of Warhammer 40k, and that's a bit of a bridge between Kill Team and the main game, so people continue to have a good experience as they transition their forces from small squad based combat to be having more like small army based warfare. I can certainly see that this makes sense to have this gap covered in their range, and they have also said that they want it to be a good experience for competitive play as well, maybe even to encourage events that use the combat patrol system, so you could play this in a bit more of a tournament setting. Well, I admit, I think I will be quite interested in this sort of thing, probably not on a massively regular basis, but, but maybe as a shake-up from the standard 2000 point games that I tend to play. I do feel that there is a bit of a risk with these small style games, that they can be just very swingy depending on exactly what anyone brings. In general, in 2000 point games, you have enough points to take enough of a balance of units to respond to most enemy threats, and be able to fill a whole load of battlefield roles. In smaller 500 point or 25 power level games, you're just not going to be able to do it very well. It's going to really incentivize small armies to go just very heavy on one strategy in any sort of competitive setting. For example, just taking all the rest of your units as either infantry or tanks to create a very skewed list that your opponent's list is going to struggle to deal with, and then just prioritize the one type of unit that's good against your units. Maybe just try and kill off their anti-horde early if you're running something like 60 orc boys, which you could easily do. Or try and take out their anti-tank very early if you're running two archaeopters and two dune crawlers from Adeptus Mechanicus, which again is very possible in one patrol. For that reason I'd be very surprised if Combat Patrol ever becomes a competitive game in the same way that 2000 point games do, but that's not to say that an event of it couldn't be fun for something different. In terms of actually playing the game, you get either 500 points or 25 power level per side. It's definitely not 50 power level per side, they did make a confusing graphic to that effect, but they have clarified it later. That 50 power level limit that they wrote down was designed to be split between the players, and I have no idea why they wrote it like that. They generally said that games smaller than this are generally better off played with Kill Team, although I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't play at 400 points if you wanted to try that. You're limited to one and only one patrol detachment for the game, which is pretty good for some armies, but less good for others. For example, if you're playing Custodes, I believe it's literally impossible to include a unit of Virtus Praetors in your army, as you just won't have enough points after one core troops and one core HQ choice. I think out of wanting to be inclusive for their own armies, they have allowed Imperial Knights to play this game mode, and similarly for their Chaos Knight counterparts. 
I thought it was a bit of an interesting choice, as that's going to be basically the ultimate in skew matches. If you are the person who brings an Imperial Knight to the table, then basically all anti-infantry guns on the opponent's side will be near enough irrelevant, and you'll be giving yourself and the opponent a very simplistic game if your opponent chooses to play you in the first place. In any case, both armies start with three command points, which does sound a bit low, but it would bear in mind that you do generate one per turn as per those new command phase rules, so you will likely get at least a good nine over the course of the game. Combat Patrol is aimed to be played on a smaller style board, with 44 inches by 30 inches being the advised minimum board side, which I think is fairly reasonable based on the side of the forces being played. Talking of those, they have made bespoke missions for them, as we've already seen. We've already seen this incisive attack mission previewed. It does have that new system of picking secondary objectives, depending on your opponent's army. And to me, this one did seem pretty much tailored for smaller style games, as it means that your units can capture an objective and then move on and you don't have to have one of your units sit around on objective duty the entire game long, as that would be quite a big chunk of your force at this points level. Finally, they've given us some example combat patrols that you can use in your games, including some breakdowns of the Indomitus, Necrons and Space Marines, both of which can make a 25 power level force. Apparently a Scorpec Lord, 3 Scorpec Destroyers and 20 Warriors will give you a 25 power level force, so in theory that should be around about 500 points under the new rules. We already know that the Necron Warriors are 12 apiece, so they're going to be 240 of those points. Maybe putting those Scorpec Destroyers at around about 40 points ahead, and the Scorpec Lord somewhere between 100 and 150. All total speculation, of course, but it does feel fairly plausible, at least just judging by the appearance of the models. On the Primaris side, we've got a Primaris Lieutenant, 5 Assault Intercessors, the Blade Guard Veterans, Outriders, and Blade Guard Ancient although it's kind of harder to guess any sort of power levels or points on these guys, as we've got no confirmation on any of them yet, though we could make some educated guesses. Interestingly enough, they have shown off a few other patrol detachments, some of which have a few weird discrepancies between the power levels that they actually have in-game at the moment. The Gene Steeler Colt one has an Acolyte Icon Ward, 5 Acolyte Hybrids, 10 Neophyte Hybrids, an Achilles Ridge Runner, 10 Pure Strain Gene Steelers, and a Jackal Alphas. They say that this will cost you 22 power level, whereas if you add up the power levels of these units as best as I can tell at the moment, it should be 26. The Chaos Space Marines are pretty similar, with a Master of Possession, 5 Chaos Marines, 2 Obliterators, and a Venom Crawler, which again they say adds up to 22 power, where again, as far as I can tell, it should be 28. They did say that they might be rebalancing power levels for certain units at some point in the future, so who knows whether that's an example of this, or whether the person who made these graphics just wasn't the most careful with their maths. If they did forget one of the Gene Stealer Cult units and maybe one Obliterator out of the Chaos, then that would account for the difference. I believe that the Admech one is on point, with no weird discrepancies like that. So, a few more tempting teasers of 9th edition then. If you'd like to keep up with more 9th edition news on the channel, then feel free to subscribe, or we'll most certainly be covering more as it comes out. If you're enjoying the series so far, then any support on the Allspecs Tactics Patreon page is massively appreciated. It is the main factor that allows me to have enough time away from my regular job to make all of these videos. As well as supporting the channel, channel patrons get to see some new videos early, there's regular polls on what sort of videos come next on the channel, and there are also monthly prize draws which all patrons get entered into. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support, then the channel's patron link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.